Hey, Chris Lipe here. Hopefully you haven't just eaten something, <laughs> but this video is gonna be pretty cool. You get to see my voice in action, doing short snippets of some of the things that I do on this channel and on songs and in some of the sing-like videos that I do. I went to my local ENT, ear, nose and throat doctor, Dr. Gupta, scoped my throat. I try to get this done about once a year. And this time he allowed me to make some strange noises and have a little discussion with him as we watched my video back of what my vocal cords were doing. And I'm excited to share this with you because it's gonna put some concrete visuals to some of the things that we hear and do on a regular basis. Now, these, these visuals are neat and they're, they're fun to see, but I have to remind us when we're watching these that it's only part of the picture. Our throat, the muscles and tissues that engage in different ways to bring different sounds, our throat is only part of the whole thing. Support is a huge, huge part of what's going on. Our throat reacts to what we're doing with our support. So keep that in mind. There are some things that you're gonna see and hear at the same time, and you're gonna see what happens in my vocal tract, but keep in mind that support, what's going on down here, is a huge part of what's helping us get this sound. The amount of air that's being introduced into my vocal tract so that it can react in strategic ways. And the other reason I'm sort of twistedly excited to show you this is because some of the things going on in my vocal tract present challenges. And this is normal. This is normal for all vocalists. They may not look exactly like what my challenges are, but they are, they do exist. And so I want you to see that. You'll notice a huge amount of post-nasal drip. I struggle with seasonal allergies. I struggle with chronic allergies. And that nasal drip, you will see that. And he actually comments on it on my vocal cords. You see these little white pieces of mucus on my vocal cords. And as I swallow, that changes and, and you'll, you'll see that happening. Also, he points out an area that is a little swollen, possibly due to acid reflux, and he points that out. So be encouraged. We all have things in our voice, in our bodies, that will help genetically or in terms of lifestyle. And we all have things that are challenges that despite our best efforts, they remain present and they don't have to be roadblocks if we don't let them. If you learn how to work around them, sing with them. And to build on what I said earlier, what we see in this video is only part of the story. And seeing this stuff can be really beneficial, but if you'd like help learning how to feel some of the things that I'm doing so that you can use your voice in similar ways, Click the link below and join my free vocal course and I'll show you exactly how. Okay, so here we go, into the voice. Watching your vocal cords and you are, you, you know, you use a lot of false chord stuff to really get that guttural kind of sound. Uh-huh. Mucus. So he just pointed out, He first thing he said is, he, oh yeah, you've got some mucus in there. Uh, and he pointed some of that stuff out. He also noticed after going through the first time, the amount of false chord engagement that I use to get some of these sounds. And uh, I thought that was worth bringing out here that he saw it right away. Uh, and he comments on that throughout the video, which I think is kind of neat. There's your vocal cords there. It's a little foggy, yeah, kind of gets a little better here. Go ahead and swallow once more. You have some mucus on that right side. <laughs> so when I swallowed, you you noticed the those little white specks on my vocal cords, they, they changed. And when I've been in uh, doing this before, I've seen those on the scope and I've... I've freaked out, like, oh, that's a nodule, oh no! 
you know, the, and it's not the case. First of all, my vocal cords are as healthy vocal cords should be. They're a nice white and you don't see anything that's on the edges that is preventing closure. That's very different than this set of vocal cords, just so that we have this clarification. You see how this has changed the shape of the vocal cord, right? It's part of this. It is a little wider, but you also notice, that, see the coloring of the, of the cords, the primary folds are the same as this. They shouldn't be pink and they shouldn't be misshapen. When you look at my vocal cords, you see that white. That's the way they should look. Now, as you'll point out in a minute, there's some swelling up here, and that has nothing to do with, with singing or screaming. You'll hear him comment on that in a second. White things at the top. Right along. What are the white things at the top? Right here? Yeah, like right there. Those are your red noise. Right there. Are they swollen or anything? A little bit red. That's why I think you have a little bit of reflux stuff going on. So what he just said there is they're a little bit red. And that's uh, why he thinks that I have some reflux going on that influences that section, the retinoids. Uh... And he'll point out some vocal anatomy here, which I think is interesting as well. Uh... This is where you were going high. And then these are your false chord areas right there. See how when you really go guttural, it shortens? Yeah. Uh... And look at that. The vocal fry is being generated by those contracted, those shortened false chords. And you can see here, here's the false chord area right in there. And they shorten and they engage inward. And because of the way that our vocal cords work and everything happens so fast, what we don't see is a lot of times is the fact that, you know, it's just doing that, even though it looks like they just kind of come together like that. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, and you see how it lengthens when I, uh, the false chords, they get out of the way and the true chords, the primary chords start doing their thing. A really interesting visual there. Uh, uh, now, Here's another thing that's interesting. You can see the, the false chord engagement. It's mild in this case, but you notice how this area, that area, those, those big round things, and then just below that, that false chord area that's above the larynx. When I go ah, like that, that area goes, mm, it, it becomes prominent and it, it becomes, it, it kind of envelops those primary chords. This is compression. This is false chord compression. You can see down at the bottom, the epiglottis area, that comes into play as well. That comes up, or it looks like it comes up, at least with the perspective that we have on the scope. So we have the false chords going like this, and we have the, the epiglottis going in like this, and it, it constricts. Now, this is different than neck ten outer neck tension that we usually develop from tensing our jaw. And this is what I've talked about so many times on the channel. The difference between intensity, which is airflow plus the reaction to what happens in our inner throat, in our vocal tract, versus tension, which is unneeded outer tension that competes with what's going on inside. So... Anyway, I just thought it's interesting. You see that the, the true chords, the primary vocal folds take a back seat and you see all these other tissues converge to, to hold back air. And you're gonna see more examples of that here in a minute. Love to sing. E e now, notice that. E that's really neat because, again, you see the tissues converge and then you see this stuff happening like that real fast, eee, like that. Now, what's happening is I'm holding back air and my false cords are 
are converging. You can see the whole thing constrict like that. That's, that's a good thing. It is holding back the air, but you see this other stuff do, doing this, and that is, that's mucus, mucus vibrating. I am passing air and it's, the mucus is, is resonating or part of the resonance that happens within the throat. You can see into your trachea there. No! Now that's really interesting. When I did that one, you saw the false chord engagement uh, and the epiglottis do even more than you saw earlier when I was going, ah! Right? When I was going, ah! It was there. That whole thing happened. But here, yeah! When I did, when I did that, you see even less of the primary chords. And if you look really carefully at that section, you can see no! And it's timed inside when when my voice breaks. The vocal cords aren't closed, aren't fully closed the whole time. They're doing some of what was happening when you saw me do the initial fry. The uh, the closure is not definitive. It's not a high quality closure. And so you can see that the false chords are taking over the sound in a very uh, plain visual way right here. No! And you can see the mucus vibrating no! on the sides of the false chords again there. And right there, it's interesting to see as well. Yeah! And we have a little bit more compression. You can see the role that the, the, the glottis plays there. And then uh, as I'm adding the compression to give that bright sound, that dying cat, ah! you can see the compression that happens there. And then you can see things converge even a bit more when that, the, the little bit of smooth grit, yeah! when that starts coming in. What's also interesting when I go high versus low, you can see my primary chords, they're, they look like they're lengthening or shortening. So they, they, they get a little more elastic and slack when I'm low. This is kind of a common thing uh, in terms of knowledge for people. And then as I go higher, things stretch. But as I go higher and things stretch, because I'm using compression, the rest of those tissues converge around it. So you, you, you see the product, what you see from the angle that the camera's down there, you see the product of those cords not stretching. I mean, they are stretching, but you don't visually see that because those other muscles have come around it. So lots of things that I've talked about on this channel from an auditory perspective and from doing hand gestures and stuff like that. But I thought it was time for you guys to see what's actually going on in my throat when I'm doing some of this stuff. Be sure to let me know what you thought of this video. If this raises some questions, be sure to ask me. And if you need help developing your support so that your neck can become the proper reactionary tool that it needs to be so that your vocal tract can react properly. Click that link below and join my free vocal course. We'll see you for more.